The following is a contemporary realistic fiction book talk. Today's book is The Boy in the Black Suit, written by Jason Reynolds. It was another one of Brooklyn's crappy fall days, where the clouds make nine in the morning look like six in the evening, but the rain just won't come down. Instead, there's a constant mist like someone or something is continuously spitting on you. And to top it all off, I had on the most uncomfortable shoes in the world, stiff, clunky dress shoes cutting into my ankles, forcing me to walk like my butt hurt. Man, you should have just left without me, I told Chris as I waddled up to the bus stop. He stood there with a the gigantic umbrella, way too big for such puny raindrops. He said to treat you like normal, he said, shrugging his shoulders. This is normal. I laughed and nodded to him. But this big-ass umbrella ain't, I joked. Neither is that monkey suit you got on, he gave it back. I laughed again. It's for my job, remember? At the funeral home, where I touch dead people, I said, pretending like I was going to touch him. And anyway, I don't even know why you're talking. You probably don't even have a suit. Probably can't even tie a tie. You're right. I don't have a suit. But I do have is an umbrella. He pulled the large umbrella farther down over him. School went its usual way. I bumped around from locker to classroom, dodging varsity jackets. Chicks with fresh doobie wraps peering into cheap stick-on locker mirrors, making fish faces while applying lip gloss. Gossip hanging above their heads like cigarette smoke. I was sure my name was somewhere in it, especially since I was shuffling around in an all-black suit, looking like some kind of secret agent with bad feet. My classmates probably just thought the suit was some sort of grieving thing, like I was making some kind of point, which I'm sure they all thought was weird. But I didn't really care because, like I said, high school seemed like nothing to me now. The Boy in the Black Suit is the story of Matt Miller, a high school senior whose mother Daisy passed away from cancer just a few weeks before the new school year started. To help make ends meet and to distract him from his loss, Matt tries to find a job. When the cluck bucket, a local fast food place, turns out to be a not so attractive option, fate intervenes through the actions of Mr. Willie Ray. Mr. Ray, who runs the local funeral home and who lives in the neighborhood, offers Matt a job. Mostly the young man will help with setting up flowers for the service and with food and chairs for the meal repasts in the basement after the service. Occasionally, too, he'll help out as a pallbearer ushering the caskets into and out of the church. During the funerals, Matt makes it a point to pick out key family members who are closest to the deceased. He actually finds that observing others in their time of loss is helping him too to understand his own grief. But one particular funeral was about to change everything. She walked up to the podium as calm and graceful as can be, but when she got there and lifted her head, I felt a lump in my throat, like I'd swallowed a house. I straightened up and sat on the edge of my seat just to get a better look. I knew her. At first I wasn't sure, but as I stared a little longer, I definitely knew I knew her. It was Renee from the Cluck Bucket. Why was everyone calling her Love? Who was Love? She looked way better at the funeral than she did at work. And then I tried to snap myself out of it because it was crazy to be looking at a girl like that at her grandma's funeral. But still, she looked so different. She had her hair down and curled, and even though I was sitting in the back of the church, I could tell she had on a little bit of makeup, and for some reason, I just knew she smelled good. Snap out of it. Snap out of it. What happens next when Matt and the girl come face to face once again? Can what they have in common be enough to start a new relationship? Find out more in this realistic contemporary novel set in an urban community of the New York City borough of Brooklyn. If you find that you enjoyed The Boy in the Black Suit, here are a couple more books that might interest you as well. When I Was the Greatest, also written by Jason Reynolds, is set in the same community of bed in Brooklyn, and it tells the story of a young man trying to navigate the challenges of a violent urban neighborhood. Me and Earl and the Dying Girl, written by Jesse Andrews, is the story of two high school friends who learn of another who is battling cancer. Like Matt Miller in this book, these young students learn about life and death and what comes afterwards. 
I hope you can find some enjoyment in one of these three titles.